Welcome back. Let's do a little bit more work on slope from section 3.2 today. Uh, we'll begin by winding the clock a little bit. Let's go back and let's take a look at, again, standard form of the equation of a line and slope intercept form. So standard form, uh, you'll recall, is ax plus by equals c. But you may remember that a, b, and c must all be integers. And a, of course, must be positive. So we don't care about b and c. They can be negative. But a has got to be positive. So a is positive, and b and c are integers. Slope in standard form is the opposite of a over b. And we did that the other day by rewriting the equation um, and solving for y. And when we did that, we got y equals the opposite of a over bx plus c over b. Okay. And we compared that to slope-intercept form, and we said, hey, look, m is really a over b or the opposite of a over b. And b, or our y-intercept from slope-intercept form, is c over b. So we should also recognize that the y-intercept in standard form is the ordered pair, 0, and then c divided by b. And of course, slope-intercept form, very near and dear to our heart. m, of course, is the slope, and b, is the y-intercept, and of course we will always write our y-intercept as an ordered pair, 0b. By substituting 0 in for x, we can solve y as the c with the y, uh, where we hit the y-axis. And that is the same way in standard form. If you think about it, if we put 0 in for x, we have a times 0. Well, that's just going to cancel out, and we get by equals c. If we divide both sides by b, we get c over b. So our y-intercept is c over b in standard form, and there it is as b in our slope-intercept form. And a little more review, of course, we see that positive slope as we read from left to right along the graph is a line that is going to go upwards as you read from left to right. So it's going to go up. Whereas a negative slope, a negative slope as you read from left to right, that is going to go down. Okay, so the green line has a negative slope. I don't know how negative it is, but it's going to be negative. Zero slope, using our roller coaster analogy, Zero slope, how much fun is that roller coaster? That is zero fun. So a horizontal line has zero slope. That baby is not a whole lot of fun. While a line that's perfectly vertical, a per well, that wasn't perfectly vertical, but it has no slope or, as we talked about, in the previous video, has an undefined slope. It's an undefined amount of fun. You guys don't have the vocabulary to describe how fun riding a roller coaster on that vertical line would be. So let's move on. Let's talk about uh, parallel lines and perpendicular lines. Well, parallel lines, you guys know parallel lines never meet. So they, if they never meet, they must have the same steepness or the same pitch, okay, or the same rate of change. Well, if they have the same steepness, the same pitch, and they never meet, they must have the same slope. So, two lines have the same slope then they're parallel, and if two lines are parallel, then they must have the same slope. 
Perpendicular, perpendicular lines, those are a little bit different animal. Perpendicular lines, of course, do meet, okay? But they meet in a, in a unique way. They meet and form right angles. We know that from our geometry. So they meet and form right angles. And we, you can, we can use the symbol like that for perpendicular, okay? Or you might recall the, that right angle box that we did in geometry as well, showing that, oh, those are right angles, they're perpendicular. Well, obviously they have different slopes. In fact, if perpendicular lines, one line is going to have a positive slope and one is going to have negative. Uh, for the most part, that's how that's going to work. So their signs are opposites, but their slopes are different too. For perpendicular, we want to look for opposite reciprocal slopes. So the opposite reciprocal. So opposite refers to the sign, positive or negative, and reciprocal refers to the fraction. Okay, and we know that reciprocals, we flip the fraction. So the fraction has got to be flipped. So perpendicular lines, if we have lines with a couple of slopes, okay, so if one line has a slope of uh, 7 fourths, the slope of the perpendicular line must equal negative 4 sevenths. They have opposite signs, one is positive and one is negative, and we flip the fraction, 7 fourths, okay, becomes 4 sevenths. So if one line had a slope of 2, the slope of the perpendicular line would be negative 1 half. So a couple sample problems of the kinds of things you'll see in this section of the text. One question, determine whether the line through points negative 1, 2, and 3, 5 is parallel to the line through 4, 7, and 8, 10. Well, parallel, bells and whistles should go off and say, hey, if they're parallel, we need the same slope. So all we really need to do is calculate the slopes of these two lines. We don't need to draw pictures. We don't need to do diagrams or take care of the Cartesian plane. So let's go ahead and calculate the slope. So the slope of those first two points, okay, well, we'll do our change in y over our change in x, right? It's rise over run. Rise, y's, rise with rise. So we'll, we'll take care of our y's. So I'm gonna take my y coordinate five and I'm gonna subtract two and divide that by, and I'm going to go back to the same x coordinate, 3 minus a minus 1. 3 minus a minus 1. So that becomes 5 minus 2 is 3, all over 3 plus 1 is 4. So the slope of that line is 3 fourths. Okay, let's check this other one out, see how we do. Same process. I'm going to calculate my slope 10 minus 7. Change in y coordinates. Since I started with this y coordinate, I got to start with the x coordinate of the same ordered pair. So 8 minus 4. So our slope again is 3 fourths. So yes, we do have parallel lines. In our second sample problem, let's take a look at this. This one says, Determine whether lines with the following equa equations are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Okay, so parallel, perpendicular, or neither, we're talking slope. So uh, does the slope of one line equal the slope of the other? Or are the slopes op opposite reciprocals? Okay, so perpendicular lines, if the slopes are opposite reciprocals, have a look at that, 
might recall opposite reciprocals. Uh, let's take a look at a couple slopes that might be opposite reciprocals. I'll give you a little helpful hint here. Negative 3 fourths and the opposite reciprocal are 4 thirds. If we multiply those two together, we get negative 1. So, if we take the product of the slopes, if the product equals negative 1, then we will have perpendicular lines. Or it could be neither. So, let's take a look at the equations of our lines. We have 3x plus 5y equals 6, 5x minus 3y equals 2. Certainly, they look different to me. Um, they're both in standard form. So, we know that slope is the opposite of a over b. So, working with 3x plus 5y equals 6, uh, a is 3. So, our slope is the opposite of 3. And b is 5. So, we have negative 3 fifths. We don't even have to write this in the slope-intercept form if we know our algebra. Well, let's take a look at the other line. Let's look at 5x minus 3y equals 2. That slope, the slope, uh, again, is going to be the opposite of a over b. Well, the opposite of a is negative 5, and b is negative 3, which gives us a slope of 5 thirds. So we need to compare negative 3 fifths And we want to compare that to 5 thirds. And sure enough, those are opposite reciprocal slopes. If we happen to multiply those two together, let's take a look at what we get. Negative 15 over 15, our product is negative 1. So we have perpendicular lines. Okay, and our explanation, you could say because... We have opposite reciprocal slopes.